Hi, believe it or not, so far we've only explored the trivial reverb creation modules. Now is the time to check a few more complex ones. The first are the so well known feedback delay networks or FDNs. The image may look scary, but it's not so complex after all. It's like several comb filters, but the feedbacks on all of them are interconnected using a matrix, which defines how much from each comb filter's outputs get fed into each comb filter's inputs. First, let's see how basic four parallel comb filters sound like. As you can see, the echo density is constant and it resonates quite a bit. Now, let's try a 4x4 NDN, which is pretty much the same thing, but has a few more wires. It still resonates, but the echo density is growing in time. That's because each echo produces four more echoes, so the number of echoes is rising exponentially. How about a bigger FDN? This is an FDN with the size depending on complexity, and since I have it set at 24, it's a 24 by 24 FDN. <laughs> Now that doesn't sound bad at all. Here's the problem with FDNs. It all depends on the matrix. In fact, the theory says that any complex reverb algorithm can be simulated using an FDM. So why bother with anything else? Because FDNs are extremely inefficient and designing the matrix is usually much more complex than designing a complex reverb algorithm, at least in M-Turbo Reverb. The FDN module here features a complex seed-based matrix generator, internally implements dampening, and you can even insert modules into the feedback paths, like this. Here the FDN has hashtag comb filters, so it can be conveniently used like that to insert, say, a vibrato into each feedback path. The bottom line is, FDNs can get you quite creative results, but always watch the CPU meter in your host. Plus, since they are sort of like mysterious black boxes, you can't really control what's happening inside them, which may be quite limiting for more creative designers. Enough of FDNs and thanks for watching.